There's a popular early 19th century English phrase, what goes up must come down. That's just as relevant today as it was 200 years ago. While fans of astronautics will state that actually many solar system and deep space exploration vehicles have been launched without the intent of their ever coming down. But when it comes to human piloted missions and particularly to the latest trends toward reusable space launch vehicles, one of the primary problems that must be solved is how to get people and spaceships back down to Earth safely. So as SpaceX Starship rockets to colonize Mars is culminating in their first super heavy supported orbital launch attempt this month, let's talk about how SpaceX Starship will survive re-entry. By far the biggest challenge SpaceX faces is ensuring that Starship can survive numerous orbital velocity re-entries with little to no wear and tear, a necessity for Starship to be cost effective. In low Earth orbit, Starship will be traveling no less than 7.8 kilometers per second. That's Mach 23 or 17,500 miles per hour at the start of atmospheric re-entry. In simple terms, the process of slowing from orbital velocity to landing on Earth involves turning the vast majority of that kinetic energy into heat. As Musk noted before, this reality is just shy of unavoidable, but there is some flexibility in terms of how quickly one wants to convert that energy into heat. Looking further ahead, the ship will have to enter Mars atmosphere at speeds of around 16,777 miles per hour. It'll slow itself down using a belly flop maneuver similar to a skydiver. They will have to withstand some high temperatures. The air hitting the space shuttle during re-entry reached around 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit as it compressed against the surface. Perseverance, NASA's Mars latest rover, reached similar toasty temps of around 2,400 degrees when it entered the planet's atmosphere in February of 2021. Actually, SpaceX chose stainless steel for the Starship which would better protect against those high temperatures. In a January 2019 interview with Popular Mechanics, Musk explained that aluminum and carbon fiber operate in a steady state up to around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Stainless steel, on the other hand, can reach up to 1600 degrees. That's an improvement, but it means the steel will need some help to endure a landing. So what's the solution for the rest? Well, to date, the only way that steely-eyed missile men and women have figured out how to do this is by various types of heat shields on re-entry vehicles to prevent them from burning up in the atmosphere. And SpaceX too, these Starship heat shields to ensure there's no straight path for hot gas to accelerate. SpaceX has been building, testing, and refining Starship's heat shield technology for more than four years. In March of 2019, Musk shared a video of the hex tiles undergoing heat test. SpaceX's custom-built ceramic tiles made their first public appearances in July and August of 2019, first launching into orbit on a Cargo Dragon spacecraft, and later tagging along on Starhopper's spectacular 150 meter, approximately 500 feet, and that was just a hop a few weeks later. Dragon went on to re-enter and splash down in the Pacific Ocean without issue about a month later, effectively marking the first successful orbital re-entry of a Starship heat shield. With Starship SN8 heralding the arrival of full-type prototype flight test in the last few months of 2020, SpaceX began to substantially increase the number of tiles installed on Starships, jumping from a handful to hundreds within a few months. SN8 was fitted with 11 tiles, SN9, 73 tiles, SN10, 246 tiles, and for SN11, 384 tiles. By SN15, the number had increased to nearly 829 tiles, and a huge thanks to Tyler Gray for this statistic. Although Starship SN15's successful May 5, 2021 launch and landing likely means it'll never fly, Starship SN16 was outfitted with more than a thousand tiles, and SN15 flew with almost as many. Ship 20 is the first Starship prototype to receive a full heat shield with over 17,000 tiles. Unfortunately, the S-20 is no longer the ship that'll make the maiden orbital flight of Starship. Known as the replacement for S-20's role, Ship 24 has approximately 18,000 tiles. To an extent, Starship's re-entry profile is actually quite similar to NASA's now-retired space shuttle, which took approximately 30 minutes to go from its re-entry burn to touchdown. 
Per the above infographic, it looks like Starship will take approximately 20 minutes from orbit to touchdown, owing to a dramatically different approach once it reaches slower speed. It seems that all of Starship's tiles are made of the same material. While we don't know the exact makeup of the tile, we do know that on public documentation they feature a large amount of silica, which is a heat-resistant material. The shuttle's belly tiles were also made out of silica fibers, a highly effective insulator. And for more depth comparison, unlike shuttle's square tiles, we can see Starship's tiles are hexagonal. The hexagon is a great shape because, as Musk said, it offers no straight path for hot gas to accelerate through the gap. Interestingly, that shape also helps prevent heat shield tiles coming loose during re-entry from creating chain reactions. Essentially, when a hexagon pops off, that exposes the two in the next layer, but the force is shared over half the width of two hexagons, unlike with a square grid where the full force is on one square. Granted, a brick pattern could be used for square tiles, and the space shuttle did a little bit of that tiling, but overall was pretty irregular. Hexagons also present an angle to the airflow, which I think is meant to help the airflow smoothly rather than ripping. But also the pressures during re-entry are generally less than during ascent for a vehicle that does a good lifting re-entry using the space shuttle data. And during re-entry, pressure is actually highest at low speeds when the vehicle has descended into thicker atmosphere. Also, re-entry is quite gentle and smooth compared with the rigors of launch and probably the flip landing burn, perhaps even static fire. I mean, it's hot. It's not shaky or violent. So assuming the tile fastening doesn't become dramatically weaker with heat, if the tiles withstood ascent, they'll probably be fine during descent. It's also worth noting that during ascent, the airflow is generally at a better angle for ripping off tiles. During EDL, which is entry, descent, and landing, Starship is mostly belly flopping, where pressure mostly presses the tiles into place, especially where the brunt of the heating takes place. Now, this is not much comfort if during ascent most of the tiles get ripped off, but if the tiles stay on well during the static fire and launch, ascent, EDL, it should go well too. On the other hand, SpaceX apparently doesn't want to glue the tiles on like what happened with the shuttle because it's too much maintenance time for replacement and refurbishment. Instead, Starship tiles are attached to the stainless exterior with studs. Elon also fixed the problem with the missing tiles on Starship by putting that white flexible ceramic fiber mat between the back of the tile and the stainless steel of the Starship. That mat is probably something like Kaowool 3000, which can be used up to about 1530 degrees centigrade without stopping. Even if one or more tiles fall off, that mat will still be stuck to the ship. In theory, Starship structure can thus withstand and remain functional at temperatures approaching 800 degrees Celsius, where the shuttle's heat shield had to keep the vehicle's aluminum structure below about 180 degrees centigrade. Of course, so far, Starship has yet to attempt to survive an orbital velocity re-entry with some 25,000 ceramic heat shield tiles mounted directly to its steel skin. But if successful, SpaceX's ultra-simple design could give Starship massive advantages over the shuttle, which ultimately proved to be more dangerous than traditional crew capsules and about as expensive as a similarly capable expendable rocket. And it's worth waiting for. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section below. Your support causes us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.